I think in Southern California, people have a high level of awareness that this coastal water quality is an important issue. We still have increased levels of people getting sick in the coastal waters due to flowing drains and creeks that come off of coastal watersheds. <laughs> so last Friday we had 105 kids coming down to the beach to study bacteria in the sand and water. So what's fecal pollution? Poop pollution. Poop, exactly. <laughs> we were taking samples back where the team at the lab uses DNA-based techniques to determine whether it's gall pollution, human pollution, or dog pollution. So our little program, which just involves, say, four or five interactions, actually increase their um, level of interest in science and Perfect. even increase their um, in understanding of the importance of science in society. So I think it works. Right now we're at Camp River Glen and this is the site of UCLA's Unicamp where we bring students from LA whose families qualify for the free and reduced lunch program. And it's just a way for them to get out of the city, experience nature, so they draw the water out of the river and it gets used here at camp, um, but then every day a pumper truck has to come pump out the water and all the sewage and take it away. It's very expensive. It costs about $320 for one truck trip. Um, and we're also working on ways to make the drinking water system more efficient and to make sure that there's adequate time for chlorine disinfection. Split it up into three main components. The first is talking about the cost. So we're the first team that's focusing on Unicamp, but hopefully the teams in the future can start where we left off, because um, we're making a lot of recommendations for data gathering and pilot projects. And then hopefully the future teams can install more, work off of our data, and come up with even better solutions. We know that with 50 and 100 year storms, they're really at risk. We're taking work that was done by Alex Hall's group in the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability, where they've modeled impacts of climate change on Los Angeles down to a two kilometer resolution. What we're doing here at the workshops is saying, now that we have that detailed information, how can we translate that for the people who are working on the forefront of public health? How can they take that detailed information and use it to communicate more effectively to people in different neighborhoods, to mobilize them and engage them, to help Los Angeles prepare for climate change?